Hi, well, thank you very much for your time and the opportunity. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about how companies from all over the world can benefit from having a US-based company. So my name is Diego Sampaio. I am co-founder and CEO of Company Combo. Company Combo, we provide different services that allow foreigner entrepreneurs to launch, manage, and grow their company in the US. So we help them form forming their business in Delaware, California, Florida. We help them with a banking account, uh, uh, an address in the US. We provide them accounting, bookkeeping, and tax services. And for those, and for those companies that work with e-commerce, we even offer e-commerce fulfillment directly from our own warehouse. And we have a, 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 we have a, a huge partners network where we can provide additional service and assistance so you can benefit from uh, our experience and our knowledge to grow your company here in the US. So globalization is a fact. For some countries like US or in the whole Europe, it's easier for you to understand more a bit about globalization and to have access for other markets. But for, for, uh, uh, for companies, entrepreneurs, from countries from Latin America, some part of the Europe, Asia, and Africa, this process is not that easy as for someone that is based in the US, okay? So let me tell you a little bit about Danilo. Danilo Brizola is a co-founder and CEO of Snowman Labs, an app-developed company from Brazil. Well, uh, he, he, had, he has a, a nice a great success in Brazil, and then he thought that was time to move on and start getting clients from other countries. He decided to start with the US, so he had a vision, and he was going to acquire more customers in the US, but he had to form a company here to be able to do that and negotiate and uh, have deals just like any other American company would be able to do. And as a side, a side benefit, he would be able to use the American company, uh, the American subsidiary, to attract clients from Europe and all over the world. Well, success is not a straight line. There's a lot of bumps in the way. It's not that easy, but it's not impossible. And my goal here today is to, to share with you a little bit, uh, about, a little bit of the know-how that we got helping thousands of entrepreneurs from outside the US to form their business here and helping them manage the company in the US. So a lot of the bumps they would have in your road, we have been there and then we're going to share some of the challenges and how to overcome them. So the challenges for globalization is to get a legal entity, how taxes will work, bank account, payment processor, developers, sales, how to hire and provide customer service, contracts, investors, and ecosystem. Well, US has all of this solved for you. For US is ready for foreigner founders. I can tell you, there, there is no other country that can, combine, that can combine legal and tax structure that is ready for non-residents, a huge local market, global reach, and an ex ecosystem really well developed with lots of investors, accelerators, and a bunch of network. I think that one thing that's really important here is that there are other countries like Estonia or UK that uh, provide legal and tax structure for foreigners, but no other country has a huge local market like the US and an ecosystem that's really well developed. So again, the US is ready for foreigners founders. Well, so let's start from the beginning, okay? So a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, when they decide to move on to a global market or start the internationalization of their business, they're gonna look for accelerators and incubators. Well, I, I have here a few different examples of programs that you have in the US. Some of them are free, some of them invest money in you, other doesn't, do not take any shares from you, they are just helping you to, to move to their, their location, to their city or their state. But those are programs that can help foreign entrepreneurs to get into the US market and from there grow all over the world, okay? So when you talk about global uh, programs, you have the 500 and the Y Combinator. They're both they both have locations in more than one place in the US. For example, uh, um, you have Y Combinator in uh, Florida and you have Y Combinator in California. So those are accelerators that can work with companies all over the world. 
Then you have accelerators that are more focused in companies that are based in the US, even if their uh, founders are, are foreigners, like the ERA from New York City, a wonderful accelerator, a really well known in New York, that work with companies that are formed here in the US. And then you have local accelerators, incubators, like the University of Central Florida Incubator, where they provide a program called Soft Landing, that you can put your company over there, and they provide you a lot of guidance and network to how to move your company from abroad to the US and how to succeed your company in the local market, in the local reach, so let's say in the Orlando or Central Florida area, and how to grow it nationally. Then you have the Starter Studio, that is an accelerator uh, located in Orlando. Uh, and then you have, for example, the Venture City, there's an accelerator located in Miami. So I brought here just some examples to show you that even when you come to Florida, well, a place that is well known for turns, but not known for uh, entrepreneurship, you have good options of accelerators. You have the same thing in Georgia, uh, New Jersey, New York, uh, Texas, and Colorado, for example. Of course, other than California and Nevada. So there's a lot of programs that can help foreign entrepreneurs and, and uh, companies from abroad to develop their, to bring and develop their products and company inside the US. Then you have to think a little bit about company location. Okay, so well, you may think I'm gonna go to Silicon Valley but there's a trick here. California, it's a really, they, they have a, a, the state has a really high state income tax. So this means that if your company is located in California, you're gonna pay a lot of state income tax on top of the federal income tax. So a lot of companies right now are moving from California, but uh, the majority of the 500 uh, largest companies in the US, they are formed actually in Delaware. So even Google, Instagram, uh, Google, Google, Twitter, uh, Amazon, their holding company is located in Delaware because there's zero state income tax. They have a specific court for business investors matters. And this is a really popular choice among investors. So usually when you're gonna be a part of a program like 500 startups or Y Combinator, if you have to form a company in the US, they're gonna ask and require to be in Delaware. And then you have other states that are really, that are, uh, really welcome for entrepreneurs like Florida, Texas, and Wyoming. Some of them offer zero state income tax or at least a lower state income tax, but they are ready to make the process of forming a company online uh, for entrepreneurs all over the world. So you don't have to have a visa or a work permit to, to open and start your business in the US. In the US, you can do that from all over the world. Then you're gonna to have to think a little bit more about the company structure. So we basically have two main, main company structures for foreigners and non-residents. So the LLC, a limited liability company that provides personal protection for the members. You have the, the, the you have a members and managers. And uh, when you talk about tax, it's a pass-through entity. This means that the company pays zero income, uh, um, zero income tax, but it has to distribute the, the, the net profits for the, for the members and they are the members, they're gonna pay income tax. And then you have a C-corporation. Uh, you're gonna have shareholders and directors and you're going, this is usually the structure that you're gonna use when you have investors, okay? But on the other hand, a, corpor a C-corporation has what they call it's double taxation. This means that the company will pay 21% of um, taxes, okay, of for income tax on your net revenue, always on the net revenue. And then when, if they distribute um, um, revenue for the, the, um, the shareholders, their shareholders will pay uh, income tax again. Uh, so you can start a company as a LLC and then move on to a C corporation if you think, uh, if you get an investor in the future or something like this. But an LLC is really, really common when you don't have investors, once you have investors, you're gonna probably probably move on to a, a C corporation. So a fun fact here is that Facebook started as an LLC in Florida, and once they get investors, they, they form a C corporation in Delaware, and from there, they grew the business, not just in the US, but for all over the world. Then you're gonna, think of, you're gonna probably think about banking, right? Well. Right now, there are banks like Mercury.com that allow you to open a bank account for technology and e-commerce uh, companies uh, without having to visit the US. 
So this means that you don't have to come to the rest to do absolutely nothing to start your business. Okay, so you have your banking needs covered with Mercury.com. Uh, and you have a bunch of payment processors, right? The most popular will be Stripe, PayPal. Those are payment processors that can accept payments from all over the world. And then this is something really interesting. You have payment processors. They are, lo they are um, focused on other markets like ebanks.com. ebanks.com is focused on the Latin America. This means that a company in the US can provide, can accept payments with local currency in the whole Latin America and using local payment methods. And I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about it um, later today. So uh, in, the, in the US, you're going to be able to accept payments from all over the world and in different currencies. And then you probably, uh, you, well, you, you need support for a tax, so legal, address, and phone number. And that's where Company Combo gets in. So you can, you can form your business 100% online without having to travel to the US. We provide customer service in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. And as I told before, we have a, a, a really nice partners and benefits network. So we can definitely help you to establish yourself in the US and provide you the support so you can grow your business here without having to come to the US or without having to live in the US. Some key product challenges. So, well, when you, when you think about globalization and get customers from abroad, you will have to think about some cultural and local aspects such as colors that you're gonna use, something, let's say black, black may, uh, may mean something in uh, Mexico and mean something really different in China, for example. You're gonna have to think the way that you structure your, sen your sentence. You're gonna have to think about the sales process, the lead time. So a, a, a client from Spain has a different lead time than a consumer from uh, uh, United States, for example. And of course, you're gonna have to think about time zone. So when you make sales, if you are in a different time zone than your customer, you're gonna to have to adapt yourself to be able to provide customer support in their time zone. Another really key point is pricing, okay? It's not because you're gonna sell something that's $50. $50 is different in, the, in Brazil, that's different in Mexico and different in Portugal and the US. So you gotta figure out how your competitors are working in that market. Okay, and really, really important is be careful with the current exchange rate. As I told you, 50 bucks here in the US are 200, uh, right now are 250 um, uh, bucks in Brazil and it's uh, 45 bucks in Portugal. So once you go to other countries, you're gonna have to find out what the countries, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what is the pricing point that will work for those areas. And uh, the same thing with uh, taxes. Because uh, if, you, if you're going to sell some kind of services or, uh, to Europe, you're going to have to include VAT in your prices. So it's really important to, for, to, to, to uh, before focusing the market, learn more about the market and find out what the, ch what the challenge will be directly for, the, for that market. And then create the pricing structure looking for that, that special needs. As I told before, the payment process and currency, this is something that's really, really important when you go like to Latin America, Africa, and Asia, because we have different payment um, um, payment types in those countries, okay? So in Mexico, you're gonna have OXO. In Brazil, you have Boleto Bancario. And uh, payment processors such as eBanks, there are the payments, payments processors in the market too, but like eBanks, they're gonna make able for a US business, a US entity to collect payments in, in reais in Brazil through uh, boleto bancario or through wire transfer and collect, collect payments in, bezo, in pesos in Mexico using OXO. So they're gonna adapt your product for different markets without, we, without, having, uh, without you have to create subsidiaries in all other countries. Uh, like eBanks, you're gonna have Alibaba use eBanks to sell their products to Latin America. Airbnb charges their clients in Latin America through eBanks to uh, Spotify, uh, Udemy, and a lot of companies that are US based uh, use eBanks, for example, to process the payments in Latin America. And you're gonna have the same for Africa, for example. Then you have the customer support, okay? So you're gonna provide customer support in what language? So although in US, Canada, and some parts of Europe, you have lots of customers that are gonna speak English, 
in other areas like Africa, again, Latin America, you're going to have to, to figure out what are the languages that are going to be providing their services and create a customer support stu structure that can provide services for, their, for them in their language. And the most important thing here is think about channel because there's a lot of countries that WhatsApp, it's not well known, but WhatsApp in Latin America, it's used uh, for, for the majority of the, 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 the customers. So you're gonna to have to create and figure out what channels will work better for the markets that you are getting. And then for, for uh, uh, the last point here is legal legislation. So you're gonna have like different uh, rules about how to treat customer data for different countries. And once you go to the countries, you're gonna to have to start thinking about it and how that will impact your business and the way that you, co you collect your customer's data and payments, for example. Well, as I told you, right, it's not that easy, but it's not impossible. And I would like to share here with you some of the companies that we have helped it, or some of them, they, they are not our clients, but those are companies that the founders and the key team is outside the US and they are able to get into the US market and then from the US to the global market using uh, a US entity. Okay, and as I told you, here in Company Combo, we can definitely help you to make that structure. Okay, please get in touch with, with us and uh, we, we love to share our knowledge. We have a lot of articles in your our website and on your YouTube channel. You can just go to www.companycombo.com to get more information and to learn more about how companies from outside the US can benefit uh, of having a US-based entity to do business all over the world. Thank you very much for your time.